is a wonderful show. This is, I tell you what, the, the people in the, these comics, I've got like 35, 40 comics in this workshop, and all of them suck except these nine. And, um, <laughs> that's not true. I said that last night. Um, I told everybody that these guys were good. Ladies and gentlemen, come to the stage right now is a very silly man. Uh, uh, not only is he a fine student of mine, uh, soon I'll be his manager, later on I'll be his AA sponsor. A <laughs> warm welcome, please. Josh Skelniak! <laughs> Positive introduction. Thanks, Tony. How about these elections, huh? Wow! I can't believe Billy Thompson pulled treasurer this year at Swore High School. Woo! You did it, Billy! Come on! You were unopposed, but you did it. <laughs> you guys didn't call the election, did you? <laughs> now, I was running late to the show tonight, so I had to change in a public bathroom. You guys ever have to do that? No. I hate changing in public bathrooms. Because first of all, they should warn you that the Koala Bear changing stations only hold 50 pounds. <laughs> One size fits all my ass! Breaks every time and somebody always walks in. I'm like, quit staring at me and rub some powder on my bum. <laughs> Lift from the ankles, come on! There's no I in team, does anyone have a wet nap? Sorry, that's disgusting. No one should start the show that way. But I do. Because I'm an alcoholic. Now, so I just started working out. <laughs> I figure if I start now, because I, I want to get ready for summer, next summer, if I start now, it'll give me plenty of time to quit, okay? and then start up again, okay? and quit, okay? and then start up again, and then quit, and then before you know it, look at me, I'm losing weight! <laughs> Sorry, that was dumb. <laughs> now, I just started working out, because I'm trying to get ready for summer. I don't want to be one of those guys that wears a shirt while he's swimming. I did that for too many years. You never look cool doing this. <laughs> never see a skinny guy doing that. What's up, ladies? <laughs> I did it too much though. I never wore a white shirt though because my I started developing fat boy nipples. <laughs> I don't know if you ever seen fat boy nipples, but they start caving in. Like, they really look like belly buttons. I look like I had three belly buttons. <laughs> We had actually four belly buttons, but we won't get into that. <laughs> but I used to wear something worse though when I went swimming. I used to wear a black shirt, like this one. And I know it doesn't sound as bad, but when you get a black shirt wet and it sticks to you, it looks a lot like whale skin. <laughs> Couldn't swim either. Actually, I could swim, which is physically impossible. I knew how. I just had to use, well, never mind. I could do the brush stroke. That was it. <laughs> but um, whale skin, yeah. Did this mic just cut out? No. No, Tony, he's always, he always has the answers. <laughs> Get him brushing his goatee. No, but uh, have you guys ever seen a beached whale before? <laughs> the whale has to be the laziest animal alive. Now, I'm a whale guy. I love whales. I'm a whale dude. Whales are my thing. <laughs> I got a bumper sticker in my car that says, I break for whales. <laughs> Haven't had to yet, but one of these days, right? No. <laughs> the whale's got to be the laziest animal. I, I was watching the Discovery Channel, okay? And they had a special on whales, and there was a whale dying. He was beached, laying there. He had like two hours to live. And in that two hours, this is all the whale did to try to save himself. Which made me think, maybe the whale wanted to be there. Because there's all these people around trying to save little whaley, trying to put him back in the water. Maybe the whale was just like, get the hell away from me. <laughs> Can't a whale just lay on the beach? I've been swimming for 32 years, good lord, I'm tired. <laughs> Could you pass the cocoa butter, please? That's not my blowhole. <laughs> Why do I have to do that when I talk like a whale? Hello? <laughs> How are you doing? Now I turn to a Scottish whale. <laughs> Hello! How's you doing? That was an Indian Scottish <laughs> Wow. Is there, someone, is there a band back here? I said this last night. <laughs> no, the uh, Chuck E. Cheese band will not be here tonight. <laughs> so my girlfriend just broke up with me. Woo! Thank you, <laughs> jerks. <laughs> He deserves it. Yeah, so I'm trying to better myself, you know. So I've been reading a lot of magazines, you know, like Men's Health, Men's Fitness, Cat Fancy. 
These magazines, though, they try to make life sound so simple, you know? They always put things in the list. 25 ways to lose weight. 25 ways to please a woman. By the way, if you know 25 ways to please a woman, you don't need to lose weight. Can <laughs> I figure it out? The 25 ways to please a woman? Oh my god. Don't you think if I knew one way to please a woman, I wouldn't need the other 24? <laughs> Just too many ways to screw up. That's too much pressure for us guys. Did you quit lying to us and name the article what it really means? 25 ways to ruin the moment and totally embarrass yourself. Because <laughs> knowing me, I'd be like, oh. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> that was all set up. <laughs> 25 ways to please a woman, huh? What do you do these all at the same time? I'd be in the bedroom with the girl getting it on. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> That's how I get it on. <laughs> and I'd be like, ooh, yeah. And I'd have my list of 25 ways in my back pocket. Because apparently I have sex with my clothes on. <laughs> And I'd be like, ooh, yeah, hey, baby, yeah. Women like a guy with a sense of humor. What did the black man say to the rabbi? <laughs> what? I mean, women like a guy with money. Here's $40. I got more than that. Where are you going? Women like a family man. I love babies. <laughs> women like a guy who's independent. Look, I'm doing it myself. Come on. <laughs> you want some stability? Knock me over. Come on. <laughs> Screw you. Gonna fall over. I'm gonna hate everyone in the room. <laughs> yeah. Single now. Loser. Same word. <laughs> so I go out a lot. I drink. I go out. And uh, I hate going out with my friends though. Because we never go out till like midnight. We're always waiting on someone. I got one of these friends who's always on his way. <laughs> Dude, where the hell are you? I'm on my way. <laughs> We're leaving. Where are you? No, I said I'm on my way. Yeah, but how close are you? I'm drying off. <laughs> when he actually shows up and he's on the phone, you're like, hey, what's up, dude? Hold on a second. Hold on. Yeah, I'm on my way. I'll be there. Dude, you just told me that. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I'm on my way. Did you hear that? I'm on my way. <laughs> I rehearse this when I'm alone. I don't have a microphone when I rehearse, so. <laughs> what was that, Josh? <laughs> wow. So I go out a lot, whatever. I went out the other night with my friend, and uh, he got his wallet stolen. Hey, Josh, you got my wallet stolen. <laughs> it sucks. I hate it. I'm like, shut up, dude. Now I gotta buy all your drinks, dude. <laughs> but you know what? I go out, I get so drunk, I forget what I do, where I go. I wish someone would steal my wallet. Because I'd probably save money. <laughs> Like, dude, guys, remember the guy that stole my wallet last night? Turns out he blew $300 at Walmart. Yeah. Thank God! So it's about this close to going to the strip club and blowing $1,000 on a one-legged midget. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> she was hot, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah. The day after drinking, though, is the worst. When you're hungover, you don't want to see anyone. You don't want to talk to anybody. I was hungover the other day. Because I'm a comic and everything happens the other day. <laughs> but I was so hungover and I was doing the stair climber at the gym. because trying to sweat the alcohol out. My buddy comes up. He's like, hey, Josh, what are you doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? Of course, I didn't hear that because I'm hungover or whatever. What I heard was, hey, Josh, let's go out and get drunk and blow hundreds of dollars on hookers and blow and hate ourselves tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, no, I can't do it again. I, I, I just can't do it again. He's like, relax, dude. I just want to know if you want to see Shrek 2. <laughs> so I went to Shrek 2. And I uh, woke up the next morning in a uh, lawn chair in Mexico with a one-legged hooker on my lap. <laughs> These aren't that funny. <laughs> so I got a roommate. I got a roommate. Actually, I don't have a roommate. I just drink so much and I forget what I do. It's like I live with a roommate. <laughs> I'll wake up the next morning after a night of drinking and I'll be like, damn it, Josh. You better not have eaten the last piece of pizza. <laughs> damn it! You always do it! It's mine! Random girls show up. They're like, Josh, I thought you loved me. I love you. I don't know who you are. Okay? 
come back at midnight and talk to my roommate. He'll explain everything. <laughs> yeah. I don't hook up with girls. Girls. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I hate telling my friends when I hook up with girls because they always interpret it wrong. You know? Like I went out with this girl the other day. And, uh, and my buddy's like, dude, you banger? You banger? And I'm like, yeah, no, no, I didn't banger. But uh, actually, we did everything butt sex. She comes out of my house the other day and she's like, why would you tell everyone we had butt sex? <laughs> I didn't say we had butt sex, I said we did everything but sex. Why would you tell them that? That was special. God, you're so anal. There you go again. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Charlie. <laughs> That's my lucky phrase in Vegas. Charlie Daniels, baby. <laughs> Hit me. When's this band coming? Because I'm dying up here. One more joke, Tony, I'm done. Boom. Check a lock of whatever. <laughs> so I notice a lot going out, like a lot of people are starting to associate words with their phone numbers. Like they do in the commercials, 1-800-COLLECT, 1-800-DIVORCE. A lot of people are starting to do that. Like my brother, he's like, dude, Josh, my new number's gun keys. Remember, G-U-N-K-E-Y-S, gun keys. Never forget it, bro. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> But I still think that's kind of confusing, though, because I went out the other night, and I asked this girl for her number, and she's like, get lost. I'm like, is that 480 or 602? <laughs> I don't know. I need an area code here. Come on. She's like, stop talking to me. Hey, long distance. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> hey, you guys, thank you very much. My name is Josh Stanley. Josh Stanley, I thank you, gentlemen. Going. I'm running through here. Like an advertisement for a commercial. To the bathroom! <laughs> what? Hey, we, uh, uh, how about a hand for the white staff, ladies and gentlemen? Put together. They, um, they uh, forgot they were open tonight and didn't hire any. And, um, no, they, so they're a little short handed, so please be patient with them because they're wonderful people. And, uh, it, the food is delicious, so enjoy that. And unless you've already eaten it. Then, um, I don't know what that means. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about tonight. It's like I'm drunk. You ever been drunk, Murray? Do you get all drunk up sometime? Do you ever get drunk and look at your wife and go, the hell with the neighbors? It's my damn house. Going out of I pay for this lot. I'll stay in my underwear if I want, God damn it. What are you looking at? I'm a taxpayer. Murray, you ever do that? What a hack. Me either. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you know, if you don't feel like laughing, just repeat the joke. <laughs> Maybe you could wake up your friend next to you and explain the joke to them. What the hell was that? <laughs> you got people repeating jokes and people choking on shit. <laughs> it's different. Like, the, the middle is having a good time, and down here, people are going, we're afraid. They might fall on us. <laughs> Soon my son will be up there. Murray, you ever shot dope? You ever do that? You ever just tie off and like the ground, the toilet in the Greyhound bus? Because you ain't got enough money to take a plane and you're in Mobile, Alabama, woke up there, just a pair of jeans and a bag of heroin. You ever done that, Marie? Me either. Um, we'll talk more, you, me and you, Marie. Come to stage right now, Legend is a very funny man. Uh, uh, recently, uh, the Las Vegas Comedy Festival came to town, Laughs Across America, and they held a contest. They had an uh, open call at a, uh, a comedy club to be named later, uh, but they had it here in this town. And uh, several hundred comics came out and auditioned for them, and one, one, ladies and gentlemen, and one to write to go to Las Vegas and represent Phoenix. And he's about to uh, appear right on this stage right now. How about a warm welcome, please, for my very good friend, Mr. Kirk Bucko! <laughs> That's right, people. You better laugh, because this is award-winning comedy here. <laughs> uh, before the show, I was making out with Skalniak, and uh, he threw $40 at me. <laughs> I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> no, actually, I was at the uh, gym earlier today, and uh, I got something really funny happened. They brought in a new piece of gym equipment, and I just got a huge kick out of watching the muscle-bound guys, you know, the big, huge steroid guys, watching their reaction. Because it was like when they put something new into the gorilla exhibit at the zoo. You know what I mean? They're sitting there just working out, just going... 
guys, he fashioned himself a stick, and he poked it. <laughs> Finally, the big guy, the dominant one, well, I assumed he was the dominant one. He had the silver back hair jetting out of his tank top. <laughs> he went away to running past her. He's like, oh, 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 oh. Veered off at the end because he was scared of it, and he ran out of stage. <laughs> but it turns out to have a happy ending because I went back uh, uh, today and uh, they've grown accustomed to it. They're using it now. They've, uh, they've stopped throwing their feces at it, which <laughs> gym people seem to enjoy. <laughs> Actually, I, was, uh, I got to fly to uh, Vegas uh, a little bit ago and I had to go through airport security and they make you take off your shoes. And I think it's a bunch of grown people in their socks. I think they should make it a little more fun. And instead of carpet, they should just have tile all in that area. <laughs> so instead of walking through the metal detector, you can like get a running start and just like slide, you know what I mean? <laughs> Think about you take your socks off, or shoes off, let's have some fun, you know? Like after you go through the metal detector, how about a big slide into a big bat of balls? <laughs> how about one of those big inflatable bouncy things? Come on, something! Fun, people, come on! <laughs> Actually, I was flying, I flew from Phoenix, and I, uh, I was going to Vegas. From Phoenix, we had a layover in Salt Lake City. Took me five hours to fly from Phoenix to Vegas. How retarded is that? But it's weird, like, flying that way, um, I've never flown into the Salt uh, Lake City airport. It's a bit different, uh, because when I was there, I saw uh, four different people trying to check a bicycle. That was unusual. <laughs> And when you're, when you're landing in Salt Lake City, the captain gets on the, uh, the PA and he goes, everyone please extinguish all caffeinated beverages. Everyone please extinguish all caffeinated beverages at this time. Except for Pepsi products, because we own it. <laughs> a little Xander there, Woo Picking on Mormons in a bar, look out, I'm a rebel. <laughs> Yeah, but when I was there, I got to, uh, actually, we were at Salt Lake City, and uh, an Arab guy got on the plane. I'm, I don't know what an Arab was doing in Salt Lake City. That baffled me, too. And I was sitting next to a guy in our row, and there's a seat between us, empty. So the guy sitting next to me, he's like, please don't let the Arab guy sit next to me. Please, I don't want the Arab guy sitting next to me. And then following him was a clean-cut white kid in a suit carrying the Book of Mormon. He's like, please don't let that guy sit next to me. Don't let the Mormon sit next to me. Give me the Arab instead, please. <laughs> I'd rather have my life challenged than my faith. <laughs> and I saw, I saw this lady and she's wearing this blue thing and it was around her neck and I thought it was one of those uh, pillows so she would help her sleep, but apparently she was just wearing it so she wouldn't uh, chew out her stitches. <laughs> she had some sort of shoulder surgery, some sort of rotator cuff, I don't know why. <laughs> That joke was funnier than that. <laughs> so anyway, I, I got into Vegas, and I went to my hotel room. I'm not sure about you guys, but whenever I, I check into a hotel, I have this uncontrollable urge to go get ice. I don't know what that is. Is that anybody? Is that anybody? It's true. Thank you. One person's going, he's dying up there, yes. <laughs> Because I get to be sitting in my house for weeks. The thought never occurred to me, I need ice. As soon as I get in that hotel room, I'm like, there's the bucket. <laughs> it's the ice bucket. If I don't put ice in it, it's just a bucket. That's crap. <laughs> so I go to, uh, I forgot, to, I was just before I was going to go to bed, I forgot to get the ice. I was like, no way I'm going to get a restful night's sleep without ice. <laughs> need to go get it. So I go, it's three in the morning, and I go get the ice in the official ice skating uniform, uniform t-shirt boxers. So I stroll and I get the ice, and then it's when I'm walking back to my room, it's when it hits me that I forgot what room I'm in. And I'm not sure if you've ever been lost in a hotel before. All the rooms look exactly the same, don't they? Other than the numbers, exactly the same. I didn't have my key with me, so I have to go down with my ice bucket back down to the lobby to see someone I just saw a couple hours ago to go, uh, excuse me, can I get a new key? And, uh, what the hell room I'm in, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. The guy's giving me a hard time, though. He's like, uh, well, do you have any ID? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I have it right here. Oh, wait, I'm in my underwear. No. It's like, well, how do you know you're not a burglar? You're actually a guest at this hotel. The hotel ice bucket with the logo on it, that doesn't give you a clue? T-shirt boxers, is this new burglar uniform? No. <laughs> He's like, well, we are on orange alert. We have to be ever vigilant against anything that looks suspicious. 
He's like, so what he did was he took my name or in the computer, found out what room I was supposedly in, and then he goes, I'm going to send a bellhop up to your room, get your ID, bring it back down, verify, get your new key, get your back in your room. Only problem is we have one bellhop worker right now, so it's going to be about an hour wait. So you, so you have to go hang out. Well, not hang out. Wait. Over there. <laughs> Uh, so I was like, all right, fine. So I stroll over to the uh, sit in the lobby with a bunch of couches. There's uh, eight other guys in their underwear with their ice buckets. We ended up going over to the lounge, putting salt around the room and adding booze. We had giant margaritas. I don't think I ever got back to my room. I don't think I cared, really. <laughs> but yeah, but being in Vegas, it's, uh, I found out uh, a bit of a gambling problem because when I was there, I bought a uh, slot machine. Soundtrack? <laughs> Think about that, you know? And here's what a loser I am. Even on the soundtrack, I lose. It's like... <laughs> Damn it, why can't I win ever? I even got the remix by Puff Daddy. He's like... Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Improv, hey! Zing, zing, zoom. <laughs> <laughs> but it's being in Vegas kind of corrupts you a little bit because every attractive woman there who was nice to me and talked to me, I automatically assume hooker. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's like, hey, is anyone taking that seat? Prostitute! Do you want anything else to eat? Whore! <laughs> Do you want to go up to your room for, and have fun for $500? Nice lady! <laughs> you see what I did there? You thought I was going to whore, but it <laughs> Speaking of whores, God, I'm glad the elections are over. I don't think I could have taken any more. It's getting a little childish, especially around the uh, the local level. I got a call. It was, it was. I got a call and it was recorded. One of those recorded messages. I was like, "Hello, this is the Republican Party, and we just want you to know that we're going to try to win the election, even though the Democrats are doing everything in their power not to. We've had signs vandalized and our headquarters broken into, and you know what I've heard? They also have a voodoo doll shaped like an elephant. <laughs> what? <laughs> but like, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting so cynical. I'm 25. I'm already so cynical. My first thought was when they did that, I'm like, you know what? They probably vandalized their own crap just to make the other side look bad. Ugh. <laughs> you guys aren't with me on that one, huh? I got it. You got it? Okay. But uh, so they're, they're, talk the robot, they're, they're talking to me and like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then I get a call waiting and it's, uh, I click over and it's the Democrats. Like, hey, this is the Democrats. What the Republicans said? That's total crap. They're a bunch of Philly like, stupid liars anyway. And it's like the, the Republicans are trying to click back in. So I just had a little three way conversation. The Republicans are like, oh, that is total crap. You know, they're just jealous, okay? And you know what? They bite their own toenails. And the Democrats are like, we do not. That's total crap. And the, oh, everybody knows. Those Republicans smell like cheese. <laughs> I'm like, what? We do not. Yeah, huh, nah, uh, yeah, huh, nah, uh, huh. I'm like, guys, guys, guys. They're like, yeah? I'm like, I know you're recording, and it doesn't make a lot of sense that I interrupted you. <laughs> but I just want to thank you guys for helping me make my decision. Because I was undecided. Now I know what I'm going to do. This, this uh, election, I'm voting Taliban. <laughs> and then I'm moving to Canada. Wow, you guys are a little uptight about that. It's a comedy show, people. They're like, he's gonna be another Johnny Walker. It's a joke! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of the Taliban and uh, repressive regimes, I was at a wedding recently. <laughs> I like to still spot that out, see who's married, who's not. But uh, I was at the wedding and uh, the, the groom was born and raised in Germany. And it was very interesting because they on the gifts list they had two board games listed and it was Risk and Battleship. I think it was very interesting how you can take the guy out of Germany. You just can't take the Germany out of the guy. Did we all study World War II? Do we know about the Germans? They like to little fight a little bit. But his vows were so romantic he was up there. He's like, yes, I have conquered your love. And, and later I shall invade you. We should make a super race of our own people to finally kill Indiana Jones. High five me! <laughs> Can I get a what what? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I wasn't surprised at the Nazi salute. I was surprised my buddy got married because uh, for the longest time he told me he had, uh, he had low self esteem. And he would, he would always explain to me, like, if you have low self esteem when you're trying to pit, hit on a lady, it's kind of that you feel like a used car salesman pushing a really crappy product. You know, his best line, his best pickup line was, What's it going to take 
to put me into you. What's it gonna say? <laughs> I'm willing to go as high as 600 a month. Some lease joke in there, I haven't figured it out yet. No. <laughs> All right, well, I, I make fun of the married guy, but uh, I myself uh, do not have a girlfriend. And uh, usually when I tell people that, they laugh at it. You guys seem sensitive. You guys are nice. <laughs> Except for her. Jackie, she has more girlfriends. Uh, <laughs> come later. But it's funny, you know, usually guy with no girlfriend, funny. Guy with no legs, not funny. <laughs> guy with no teeth, that's funny again, isn't it? Guy with no eyes, not funny. Guy with no bladder control, very funny. <laughs> Guy with no weapons of mass destruction, that's funny to Democrats. Republicans, not so much. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, folks. I gotta go. Get, get Tony back up here. <laughs> Hurt the fuck out, ladies and gentlemen. Very funny. Good job. Good job. Kurt fuck out. He, um, he won. He, 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 he did really well in Vegas when he was sober. So, um, <laughs> Which I was out there and it was just, they were just, uh, their livers actually shot out of their bodies going, leave us the fuck alone. <laughs> Good. I like to be sure we're being hot like this. That's what I enjoy doing. Things are going well, curse got you laughing, I just stop everybody. I enjoy that. I mean, it's like a little conspiracy. Don't laugh. Make him feel self conscious about his beer. I can't go until everybody stops laughing. You hear that? See, kids? There, see? Now you. Keeps going. Murray, what the hell, right? <laughs> You're kind of like triage tonight. How long have you been married, Murray? 33 years. Before that, tore it up a little? <laughs> Daughter wants to break off a piece? Um, that's a romantic phrase. I'm going to break off a piece of that. <laughs> you ever say that, Murray? I'm going to break off a piece of that? <laughs> say it for me now. Come on, Murray. I get, Murray, I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> Say, I'll break off a piece of that. Like, you know what? A buck and a half. What the hell? I'm generous. I'm doing good. I'm flush. 33 years. How many kids do you have? Two? Seems like you'd have more after all that time. You should make 50 years. Huh? Seems like more? What did I tell you, Murray, about how this works? I could just put on a tie and sit there and go, what the hell? You ever take a crack suppository, Murray? <laughs> that was an itch. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to stage right now is a very funny young lady. She's a personal friend of mine. In a moment, she will be a personal friend of yours. For many of the people in the room, she is a personal friend. How about a warm welcome, please? Janet Jones! <laughs> What's up, ladies and germs? How's it hanging? Do I know you? Oh, anyways, great, great start. So, has anybody had ever had any grandparents? Murray, you never had grandparents? Oh, great. ET phone home. Um, I have this grandmother, right? I love her so much. I buy her a carton of cigarettes every Christmas. And she's Jewish. But they're not filtered, so I guess it's kosher. And one time I took her out to eat. I took her to Planet Hollywood. And she just couldn't wait to get outside to have a cigarette. And so she lights her up right in the elevator. I was like, Granny, you can't like that in here. She's like, what are they going to do to an old lady? So the fire department came, but we made a clean getaway, you know? But ever since then, whenever I'm with her, whenever we see a fire truck, she's like, You'll never catch me, engine number nine. <laughs> never. She's so crazy. She's just like a teenager, you know, except she's all wrinkled up and shriveled and looks like a prune that's been left out in the sun all day. <laughs> a very frail, pale, ugly old woman. <laughs> but other than that, just like a teenager. Yeah, so um, she goes to this thing called Caring on the weekends where all the old people all get together and they go shopping for useless stuff. It's so much fun. So she's with her friend, and her friend was like, Hey, Ruthie, check out this necklace. It's the Virgin Mary. She's like, I can't wear that. I'm Jewish. Give me that Elvis. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Grandma Elvis has left the <laughs> no, for real though. Um, my grandmother, she always comes over for Thanksgiving, and she only eats the neck of the turkey. I'm like, Ugh. Right? I'm like, the neck? Who eats the neck? That's disgusting. But then I was looking at her, I was like, maybe because it looks like her neck. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. And uh, I went over to her house this one time, and I was checking out all this, her fridge and see what kind of weird stuff she's eating. And I opened up her freezer, and I saw the tops of the wedding cakes. I was like, Grant, how many times have you been married? She's like, that's none of your goddamn business. <laughs> Turns out she's been married eight times, and each one of the guy's names was Henry. <laughs> <laughs> that's for you 60s folk. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was like, Grant, like, what happened to these guys? Did you divorce them all? She's like... I divorced two and the rest died. Natural causes. A bow and arrow's natural. <laughs> I went to the store and I, I said, hey, it looks unnatural. It's, it's handmade. Natural. <laughs> exactly. Right, Zach? So, I'm a loser. <laughs> For real, though. She's a really crazy lady, and uh, she just has all these flaws, though. Like, she can't see or hear or walk or breathe or love. <laughs> <laughs> why do you hate me? I don't know why she hates me. But uh, this one time, we were, like, going back to the casino, because that's where she lives, because she's a gambler. And uh, it was really bright outside and really dull inside. And she drives this little, like, whoosh, whoosh, you know, like, whoosh, scooter thing. And uh, she just couldn't see, you know, when we got inside. And acting like Mr. Magoo, this lady just floors it right down the stairs. She's like, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> and after a while, it was almost like she liked it. She was like, ow, 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 ow. Ooh. <laughs> I'm wearing sticky lip gloss. <laughs> Yeah, so ever since then, we moved her into this high-rise apartment. She's always taking the stairs. <laughs> Said it's healthy. We call her Grandma Slinky now. <laughs> slinky, Slinky, everybody else. So, I don't know if you guys figured this out yet, but I'm gay. <laughs> so funny, I know. I laughed when I realized, too. <laughs> yeah, I consider myself to be a lipstick lesbian, but I wear a hell of a lot of chapstick. So maybe I'm a chapstick lesbian. It's tricky. Yeah, so um, living this lifestyle, I learned a lot of crazy things, and I came to one conclusion, that if it wasn't for terrorism and bull dykes, duct tape would be out of business. <laughs> Speaking of being tied down, uh, one time when I was younger, my brother um, duct taped me to the fireplace. It was hot. <laughs> Definitely not natural. Oh, jeez. But um, I'm failing out of school. So tricky. It's really hard to do, but I'm fine with it, you know, I wasn't having a good time really soaking it up, like, yeah, soaking it up. And I'm not really learning anything, really. No, okay, I'm just drinking a lot. <laughs> you know, no one ever remembers what they, me uh, what they learn in lecture, you know? But I sure as hell remember those nights I'm passed out drunk in some random person's apartment complex, singing some Ace of Bass song, <laughs> wearing nothing but a thong bikini and holding my flip-flop in my hand. <laughs> Mint chocolate chip ice cream all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. But um, I really do like my women's studies class though, because it's a lab. So I walk up to these girls. <laughs> this is my favorite joke. Just get you a lot harder. <laughs> so 
know, I like walk up to these girls and I'm like, hey, do you want to be my partner? <laughs> <laughs> No, for real. <laughs> <laughs> and then my lip does this weird thing because I get nervous. I'm like, <laughs> Do you want to have sex with me? <laughs> and you are the drool. <laughs> it's natural. <laughs> So afraid my parents are gonna give me a phone call, you know? They're gonna be like, now Jacqueline, deep breath. You can't be gay until you pull your grades up. <laughs> Talk about being cut off, right? I'm like, but mom, I wanna be gay now. All my friends are doing it. I bought all this chapstick. Nine of them. It's so fun. But yeah, and then she's like, not with those grades, young lady. <laughs> Engine of an I no. No grades, no. Natural. <laughs> but recently I went to jail. <laughs> it's a great true Hollywood story. Follow up on it. <sighs> the ankle chains hurt like a bitch. But not like the ones at home, though. <laughs> those are fuzzy on the inside. <laughs> And my ex-girlfriend, she called the cops, and she was telling them that I was punching her and kicking her and doing all this crazy stuff. She was lying through her teeth, which were on the ground. <laughs> How did those get there? <laughs> but yeah, um, whoa, I totally am blank stare right now. Oh yeah, so um, back to failing out of school. Um, do you guys remember when you were a little kid? This is so fun, I don't know, I'm just talking to myself. Um, when they do those cool contests, you know, and they're like, guess how many jelly beans are in this jar? And I get all excited, I'm like, okay. One. Multiplying the better. <laughs> Six in the jar. <laughs> you're, you're the only kid here today. So I'm just gonna think to myself. I'm like, but, but, but now I'm, I'm starving. <laughs> oh, I'm just stupid and hungry. <laughs> what she doesn't know is that I'm a diabetic. I'm like, give me a jelly bean, I need insulin. <laughs> give me a jelly bean or I'm gonna die. <laughs> The grades are up, you know, so I can be gay again. <laughs> so crazy. Oh, wait, and then when I was in jail, I got to make this one phone call, and I was handcuffed to the to the wall. It was so much fun. But I called my sister, and I was like, "Hey, Jane, guess where I am?" And she's like, "Jail." I'm like, <laughs> it's so weird. I'm like, how'd you guess? She's like, "We don't only ever call us when you're in trouble. You need money. We just sent you money." <laughs> Like, well, we miss hearing from you, you know? We miss you. Maybe next time you can get a restaurant on Christmas. We'd love to hear from you on Christmas. <laughs> I thought I was Jewish. <laughs> kind of, yeah. kind of Jewish. Yeah. Is that a pity clap? <laughs> 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 All right, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I got out of jail, went to a party. That's what I do. Yeah, uh, Jim, Jim, Jack, and Jose were there. But there was this guy who came up to me and he was like all drunk. And he was like, hey, you're just looking. What are you doing? You want to let it neck? I was like, neck? Who says that anymore? <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Uh, do you have any sisters? <laughs> Figured it was worth a shot, you know, I was vulnerable with it too. Ah, oh, dear. But uh, he just uh, didn't quit, you know. He gave me the beer and that was so much fun. And then he just went leave. And I was like, I had to tell him. like, you know what? I'm a lesbian. He's like, I don't care if you're from Lebanon. We can work around 
I was like, what is this guy thinking? I was like, you know what, man? I have a disease. I have chlamydia. It's fun, right? Syphilis, too. I have all the rheas. Oh. <laughs> Take it or leave it, right? <laughs> Yummy. <sighs> He's like, I don't care if you're from Pakistan. I'm not a racialist as long as you're not a queer. <laughs> Hey, you guys rock my socks off. I'm Jackie Jones. Thank you very much. Jackie Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it together. The lovely and gentleman, Jackie Jones. Um, uh, before I bring up the next performer, I want to point out that I've been uh, talking to his father the entire time. And, um, and he had told his mother that uh, no one would make fun of her. Your son's a liar. <laughs> And a drinker to boot. Did you know that? The boy drinks. <laughs> and, and, and Murray's wife, shall I call you Murray? What is your name? Lori. Wait a minute, hold on. Oh, you're over there. Who are you? Are you Murray's wife? Yeah. You're Kevin's mother. Who are the three women between you and your husband? They're your other daughters. They're your other daughters? So you had the whole family sitting here? No pressure. <laughs> That's how it gets after 33 years. You just have more and more kids so that your spouse can sit further away from you. I'm basically working on one table right now. We're having a good time. The hell with the rest of you. To be honest. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to stage, uh, this is very exciting for me. Uh, and like I told you earlier, there will be people appearing on the stage tonight who have never appeared on a comedy stage before. And this will be their very first time. And you guys are always super cool to these people. So we want you to give them a lot of friendly love. How about a warm welcome, please, make his comedy debut, Mr. Kevin Witch! I wish you <laughs> By the way, I don't, I don't really think that Jackie's gay. I think she just stuck up. About <laughs> 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, my name's Kevin Whips. Thanks everybody for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. Everybody that I know, anyways. Everybody else here, thank you. Uh, anybody here have any problems remembering things? Like, you know, where you put your keys, where you parked your car, how many kids you have? <laughs> you know, little things like that. I mean, I do. I, I seriously, I'll meet somebody, five minutes later, no clue who they are. None. So what I started doing was I started giving people nicknames as a result. Like, in particular, the girls that I meet, like there was the school girl, there was Stumpy. <laughs> Just a little slow. There was Lithium Broad. It was really a lot of fun. And that was cool for a while, until I found out they were giving me nicknames too. Like, restraining order. <laughs> or the reason I carry mace. <laughs> or my favorite one, defendant. <laughs> yeah, so I got this neighbor who I gave a nickname to also. His name's Phil, but I like to call him Crazy Eye Phil because he's got this one eye that's never really focuses on anything. He's like all over the place. And Phil's an older guy. You know, he hangs around in my garage while I'm putting around and stuff. And one day Phil comes up to me and he says, Kevin, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but I've got this thing with my eye. And I'm thinking to myself, if by thing you mean you can look around corners without turning your head, then yeah, I notice. <laughs> but of course, I mean, you don't want to say that to the guy. I mean, you don't want to hurt his feelings. So I'm like, crazy eye? No! No! I've never noticed a crazy eye. What do you... You mean the thing that scares off my dogs? No, never noticed it. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna give you a nickname right now. It's Normal Eye Phil. That's a new nickname, Normal Eye Phil. Now we're gonna have. So everybody here pretty much knows my dad. Tony's introduced him. But anybody else here have a dad ever? Woo! Thank you. Well, I got a dad. We share a lot of similar traits. Looks just like me. Except he's got a little bit less hair. <laughs> he swears it's just thinning, but I think what he really means is that he's got this patch of flesh on the back of his melon the size of the North Pole. It's freaking huge. Seriously, in the winter, it freezes over and you can ask me. <laughs>